Welcome to this video introducing the new features and functionality of Costex 7.2, the latest edition of the Costex suite of products. A lot of work has gone into the background of the release this time, so a lot of stuff that I can't show you related to security and laying the foundations for future developments of the product, which again, being in the future, I can't show you those today. Um, one of the first changes that you will notice if you're a network user, so if I sign on to the, the network version of Costex rather than standalone, in the past, this screen, had, as well as allowing you to choose which server to connect to and which product you were using, depending on your license, would offer you the opportunity to put your username and password in. Nowadays, if I click the OK button, after a authentication process, you get presented with a web page uh, to pre prepare or enter your username and continue. And then your password. And again, either hit the Enter key or continue. After which the product opens and looks just the same as it did before. Okay, so now that we're in Costex, let's open up a building and see what other changes have been introduced. I'm going to switch to the dimension view. And in the past, uh, here I've got all my drawings arranged in folders and subfolders. That obviously remains the same. Um, if I wanted to change any of the properties of any of the drawings, I would have to right click on one of those and edit the properties or double click it has the same effect. And it's opening up the properties for that one drawing at a time where obviously I can change any of the properties related to that drawing for this revision. So what we've introduced in Costex 7.2 is the concept of a drawing manager. So on the drawings men menu here, I have a button to open the drawings manager or alternatively, I can right click in the drawing pane here and choose to open the drawing manager. It has the same effect where, as you can see, it gives a list of all of the drawings that I have loaded up here uh, in, a, in a grid. Um, just like other grids within the Costex application, I have the asterisk or snowflake button here where I can cho choose to turn on and off different columns, show or, or hide the various columns. And just like other grids, if I grab a column heading and drag it above the grid, it will then group uh, by that um, that aspect, in this case, the folder. So uh, I now have a, a grid which looks somewhat similar to the, the list of drawings I have here. Either way, however, you've got it um, displayed. The idea is that uh, you can edit the information um, in the grid here as opposed to having to edit the the properties of the drawing so one aspect which allows inline editing editing is the name so by double clicking in the name here or clicking twice you can see that the cursor is active if i just delete the reference to the fact that it's a pdf drawing and uh, just hit the enter button you can see in the background the drawing name updates uh, accordingly so the idea being if you load a multi-sheet PDF, say, where um, you just load all 50 sheets, 60, whatever it is, sheets from a PDF drawing, they just come in listed as sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four. You could track down the list, edit the names uh, to something more reflective of what you want to call those drawings. In terms of other uh, edit capability, if I select multiple drawings uh, here, you, um, using the, the check boxes or just clicking on them in the grid and holding the control key down in this case to, to do a multiple selection, you can edit uh, more properties. So let me just use the uh, shift key there to click and shift to select these four drawings in the architecture plans folder. With all of those selected, I'm just going to hit the edit button. And in this case, obviously, I can't change the name. Uh, there are multiple names. I can't revise them all to one. Uh, name. However, I can choose to shift them to another folder. So if I go put those in the site folder and update, we'll see those four drawings move into the site folder along with the, the site plan and site conditions, which are already there. Uh, let's just edit again and I'll put those back. And again, I could just type a new folder. It would um, 
enter those drawings or, or move those drawings into the new folder which I typed. Other aspects which you can change at this stage, this being phase one of the drawing manager, is the drawing register. So again, if I just received all these drawings today, I can enter the date received, hit update. It's going to apply that to all of the drawings that I have selected, these, these four here. Uh, I can lock the drawings all in one go um, to prevent them being any more measurements being taken from them from by other users. And whilst at the moment they've all defaulted to line mode because they are vector drawings, so it's make, taking advantage of the vector information, I could, if I wanted, um, decide that I'm going to preferably measure from those in point mode, so default to that. Either way, whatever you change here, uh, hit the update button and it applies that to all of the selected drawings immediately and the updates um, are reflected behind the scenes here, meaning that whilst I have this dialog open, um, the drawings are still available for other people to work with. As I say, this is phase one, so at the moment we can't change scale or calibration because that is a bit more involved in terms of loading the drawing, changing all the dimensions, updating dimension groups, updating the estimate in the workbook, etc. Uh, with all those new quantities, so that um, is going to come in a future edition. Whilst on the subject of drawings, uh, Costex 7.2 has introduced support for native Revit files for Revit 2024, so the RVT Revit 2024 files. And in other details, uh, let's actually open this drawing. So previously, if I was copying a dimension group, so let's go to my room uh, folder and select the instruction rooms, which I can see of the 1243 square meters uh, measured, 459 square meters in the legend here is off this drawing. And I can see by the bold that um, there's other quantities measured from other drawings. So uh, when we had used to look at the dimensions in the past, um, the default is to show the measures for the current drawing or the dimensions for the current drawing. Let's turn those off. There we go. So the 459.38 is the amount from this drawing. If I wanted to see the total for all drawings, I would have to uncheck the current drawing box. And now I have the, the 12.42, the, the total for all drawings. That default, uh, or I'd always used to default back to being on. Um, so each time you moved around the software, closed out, came back in, the uh, current drawing filter would reset to being on. Now that is um, saved in the registry so that uh, the, your choice of whether you show the current drawing or all drawings is remembered for the next session, next time you, you log in. Similarly, if I change to, let's see, the um, ground floor structure drawing here, And I'll go to the substructure folder and my isolated base, base foundations, where currently I've already measured uh, all bar these um, four pad foundations in the middle of the building here. And when I point at these dimension groups, although they are counting uh, only, they're just showing the count there, you can see that there's a whole lot of other information being captured besides. So if I just edit uh, the one of these, dimension groups you can see that uh, yes I'm counting the dimension groups but there's a whole host of custom quantities for which on the measured dimensions tab I've set up all the the calculations to calculate those custom quantities and I don't want to have to do that again and again from scratch so I want to uh, copy the dimension group now again when I had used to do that the default was to always copy dimensions with the dimension group uh, and in this case, you know, I, I, it's not the same uh, objects I'm going to be measuring. I'm going to be um, measuring these four meter by two meter uh, pad foundations. I don't want to uh, include the measure of the, the 22 uh, different ones. So I've unchecked that and OK, uh, I've got a, an empty dimension group ready to measure. However, if I go here, all my custom quantities and all the measured dimension formulas are in place already, just, as I say, ready to measure. Again, in the past, that had always used to default to on. So if I go back and copy it again, 
you'll notice that what we've done is again just a little detail change but to remember the last setting so again it remembered that last time i had that turned off and uh, it's retained that setting for this uh, instance of copying okay let's look at the changes to the workbook side of caustic 7.2 which i'll do by opening this building here The changes we're going to look at are centered around the report writing or report uh, the ship with the product. So um, I'll start by opening this NRM1 type cost plan where we have the list of buildings uh, or parts of the project at level one of the workbook. If I drill into um, building one, we can see there's a sort of elemental group summary uh, for that building at level two of the workbook. And if I drill down further, say into the superstructure um, element, group then we have all the individual elements within that group for frame upper floors etc and finally going down in this case to level one two three four of the workbook we're down looking at the price line items um, some of which having these uh, bold subheadings uh, before them and uh, we also have these italic and underlined item headings in line with the, the, the items at this level of the workbook. Returning back to the top, we've got building two, which if I drill into that is just stops at two levels deep. It's just not included as part of this estimate. So we've got a, a asymmetric, if you like, uh, workbook structure. So looking at the reports, the first thing you'll notice with Costex 7.2, we've um, trimmed back the number of reports that are shipped as part of the system. And in doing that, we've included these two new reports at the top here, the estimate report level one to six, which we'll look at now. And then the bills of quantities we'll go on to look at in a second. So as regards to the estimate report, if I generate a preview of this, I'm first presented with a dialogue asking whether I want to price a or sorry, output an unpriced or priced estimate, the default obviously being priced. Uh, we'll look at this in a moment. We'll leave this so it in, will include uh, items with a zero total. And um, we have the option to limit the, the output of the workbook. So by leaving it at six, uh, the maximum, it will output anything up to six. So in this case, uh, building one, as we saw, was multiple levels deep. So we have this um, overall summary, including at the moment the zero value items. Um, then for building one, the first uh, line on the summary there, it's drilling down and giving us the level two detail, again, with the zero value items. Then for each of these, so facilitating work, superstructure, etc. So here's the facilitating works, all zero. Uh, here's superstructure, which is broken down um, into we then what the third level now level one level two superstructure level three the uh, the elements and for each of these frame upper floors roof we then go down to that level that fourth level frame upper floors roof etc um, outputting those items so it's going down as deep as it needs to in each section so if we scroll past building one until we hit building two There we go. Then uh, both building two and the land acquisition fees here um, stop at level two. So that's it. We're down at the end of the report. Um, they're still output, but because they only go two levels deep, that's all we get. So as I say, the, the report handles that asymmetry uh, and the different levels. I can, as I mentioned uh, previously, if we preview it again, I can say that I want to exclude items with zero total, in which case I might want to, um, oh, well, I'll need to identify that bold are, the, the subheadings are formatted bold, and those uh, inline item headings were italic and underlined. And just for argument's sake, let's say we're only going to output two levels of the structure this time. So if I fire the report off now, you'll notice that all the zero value items, so building two and the um, land acquisition costs have both been 
uh, removed from the report because I had a zero value. Anything with text like excluded here and here, that's not a zero value. So that is maintained in the report uh, even when we check that zero value option. Um, we limited it to two levels of the workbook. So um, that's all I'm getting, those two pages, the, the just that level one summary and level two uh, for building one, the, the land acquisition and facilitating as a building two have been excluded. Uh, finally, let's just run it again. Because what I forgot to do was uh, if I leave it at level six and run the report, uh, this time we're getting you know, uh, more detail, 16 pages. Um, so where we have, um, we said to exclude zero value items and obviously um, these headings are zero value. However, because we checked the box uh, and told the report what formatting they were, the bold and the italic and underlined, there being output on the report, even though they have um, zero value. Obviously, if both of these items under this heading were zero and therefore they, they didn't appear, then this heading um, item heading wouldn't appear with them either. Uh, so it's just a question, a question of identifying the formatting and printing a report. OK, moving on to the bill of quantities. So this is a fairly typical uh, structure that we see a lot from you um, around our users around the world, where uh, level one of the workbook is the different trades that are included for the, each bill and down behind each of these. So let's just go into concrete. We have all the, the items, again, often unpriced in a, in a bill of quantities. In this case, I, I have them priced. Um, where once again, this I have uh, subheadings and item headings. Uh, this time bold and underlined and then just underlined for the item headings. So we the other new report is this build of quantities uh, two or three level, which again, let's generate the preview of that and show you what uh, we've given you out of the box. Again, we've got the option to maintain the headings. Uh, it has a slightly different function this time, which I'll outline. So for now, I'm going to uh, untick all those. Um, I mean, the fact that they were ticked in the first place shows you you can actually set them as default, that my default is to have bold and underlined uh, subheadings and uh, underlined item headings. So I've set that as a, as a default. And we can talk about that later. Um, and I'll go for the price report. So if I fire that off, you'll see that um, we've given you a cover page. The idea being that you can edit and uh, replace this imagery with your own, and obviously replace the logo, etc., with your own. Um, but for each of the pages, I didn't point it out in the, in the workbook, but um, there was no coding in the workbook. So the report is actually generating these codes starting at A um, on each page. Uh, it's taking each page um, to a collection. So the total of 14851 and 2795 are coming through to a collection for that groundworks trade. Uh, we then move on to concrete, where again, we have the collection uh, 177, 18957, etc., coming through to a collection of concrete, followed by formwork, followed by the provisional sums here. Uh, once we've done all that, we then have the final, all those collection pages are brought through to the final summary um, for all, all of the trades we have here, given us a total for the project. Now, going back to the start, I mean, that's all fine. Hopefully, that's a good um, starting point for a bill of quantities. But what you'll notice is um, there are some issues here. So, uh, this heading of backfilling, our uh, subheading of backfilling and disposal, has been divorced from the item heading and these items that follow it. And uh, if we scroll on through, Let's have a look. Here. Uh, here we go, formwork. So there's a subheading here, formwork above ground floor, and the newest or the last um, item heading said class three formwork. It would be good if they that was repeated. So where these there are enough items to span over the page boundary, uh, I would rather repeat those headings or subheadings and item headings on top of the next page. So if I come out of here and generate the report again,
and this time as i say i've already got the preset um bold and underlined and underlined for the item headings so if i fire the report off again this time you'll notice that the the because i've said what the format of these headings subheadings and item headings are it's recognizing that as a heading and has moved it onto the next page so that it lives with the items uh, that it relates to and isn't divorced on its own on this page and when we go to the formwork trade um, that again we're telling it that this is a subheading and that this is an item heading it saves it and then is able to repeat it on the next page with the word continued afterwards to to carry on and one last thing on this report i think is that uh, we have these provisional items in here so um, provisional sums so i haven't yet done it so let's print the uh, report without pricing in it so when i click on the option to um, print unpriced you'll note this pop-up um, dialogue which says that anything with these any, any totals where you have prov sum prov pc sum or any rates with pc rates are still going to get output on the report even though i've said to produce unpriced output so if i fire the report off again this time all the pricing has uh, been taken away all the the rates totals and page totals and obviously the collection page totals everything has been removed so it's an unpriced um, bill apart from uh, items where it recognized that the unit matched one of those provisional uh, rate provisional sum uh, units and it is still output those on the report for sending to the, the contract for pricing if you like um, doesn't take it through to a total or a collection and just in case there are, as a mixture of provisional and non-provisional items on a page um, obviously in the price report or when you print the price report that that it all gets taken through um, just quickly the three level bit um, workbook here uh, again typical of a lot of what we see where again we have block three block five so the, the preliminaries this this is asymmetric again the preliminaries are two levels deep I'm straight from level one into the items underneath uh, in terms of the teaching blocks block three block five if I drill into those um, from the summary for block three into the trades and then drill down further we're now at level three where again we have the priced items with the uh subhead the, in the inline headings so just to show this I mean, it's called a two or three level um report so the same report if i generate it again And just fire off with the default settings there so uh, as we said prelims was two levels deep so we're straight from level one into the items at level two these pages going through to collection um, none of it's actually priced but that's uh, we have the collection for four preliminaries there going to the final summary so that was the two level part of the report and then when we're down to the three level where we've got the teaching block groundwork and then into the items at level three it's behaving just the same it's taking the groundwork uh, trade through to a collection uh, we then go on to the concrete trade and the uh, formwork trade all going through to collections however because they're down at level three they're now summarized uh, on a, a summary for those trades under um, teaching block three before we then move on to teaching block five again the trades for that steel uh, metalwork and uh, roofing again collections for each um, taken through to a uh, the, sorry the collections taken through to the summary for teaching block five we then again go back to a two level where we've just got those provisional sums going straight to collection uh, and the, all of that is taken to a final summary so again whether it's two levels or three levels deep or a mixture of both um, it's all been taken through to this, the, the final summary at the toad at the end here one last thing on the reports before we move on um, 
is in the past when you well these these are system reports so to make edits as i say to change the logo or change the cover image on the reports i first have to make a copy which i can do here now obviously in doing that i can change the structure of the report different levels whether it includes rate build-ups etc etc uh, i'll just leave the name um, as the copy what we've introduced in this latest version is the ability using the drop down uh, button here is to edit the report properties so having given that uh, a name I'm not happy with. Previously, I would have had to have created another copy and renamed it. Now I can instead go to edit the report properties where those aspects of um, the naming of the report, the title and um, the folder that it lives in uh, can all be edited and updated uh, without actually having to create a, a copy of the report. So a fairly detailed change, but again, not less useful. One final thing I'm going to show you is actually outside of Costex. So uh, let's open up Windows Explorer. Um, again, it's a detailed change, but I'm going to show you this as much as a reminder that the utility exists. So if I go to my local disk and program files, the Xactor folder, and uh, in terms of this case, Costex server, there's a bulk export utility and bulk import utility. So in terms of the export, this allows you to export um, projects um, with their associated buildings uh, to archive all at the one time. So if I launch that in line with the new security protocols, uh, it's given me the option to select the server and then separately authenticates and presents the web pages for me to enter my username and password. So if I log in as myself, as long as I have permission to use this utility to export buildings and projects, then it opens up uh, where I can start making selections of the list that I want to, to export. Um, the detail change we've introduced is the ability, obviously I've only got a very limited amount of information in this test database I'm using, uh, but we have the ability to quickly select all or deselect all um, before you, you export them. So again, just a minor change, but just almost a reminder to people that this utility exists to help you archive information.